guys, welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Go Pony, and today we are in the new 2020 Kia Telluride, courtesy of Kia. They actually lent it to me for a week to check out, so thank you, Kia. Anyways, I'm quite excited to check this one out, of course. It did just recently win the Motor Trend SUV of the Year, as well as the Best Three Row Midsize SUV Award by Kelly Blue Books. Got a lot going for it there. IIHS Top Safety Pick as well. And so since I've had it for a week now, essentially what I am going to go over is my week's experience with the SUV. I've taken it everywhere. Average miles per gallon, performance, braking, handling, all that fun stuff. So I do hope you guys get a lot out of this video. If you are considering this, I'm gonna do some comparisons as we go as well. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as expected, there are a few different trim levels for the 2020 Kia Telluride. First one being the LX starting at $31,690. S trim level starting at $33,990. EX starting at $37,090. And lastly, the SX trim level that we currently have today. That one is going to start at $41,490. And so I put it that way. All of these trim levels do actually come standard with a front wheel drive setup. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, which I would imagine most people would, especially here in Pennsylvania, simply add $2,000 to any of those prices. And actually with that all wheel drive system, if you were to go that route, that is actually also going to include an all wheel drive lock feature to keep it in that all wheel drive mode permanently. And actually a snow mode as well. Definitely some nice features if you live in a colder climate like I do here in Pennsylvania. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Telluride will actually be the same. Power on this beast is going to come from a 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6. And I did like that it actually used hydraulic hood struts as opposed to a prop rod that a lot of times you find on SUVs. So that's definitely a plus. But nonetheless, power comes in at 291 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 262 pound feet of torque available at 5,200 RPM. Power, of course, sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic, giving you a zero to 60 time coming in in approximately 7.5. 2 seconds, which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here. But overall, MPG numbers are going to be estimated at 20 in the city, 26 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 19 city, 24 highway for the all wheel drive, taking regular unleaded fuel or AKA 87 octane. And so let me go ahead and take a look at the fuel information here. This vehicle does have 12,000 miles on it now. So let's see how much we have averaged so far in the last 2,700 miles. This particular Kia Telluride has averaged 24.6 miles per gallon. That is actually excellent. My own 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe, I average around 22 or 23. So in a bigger Kia Telluride, 24.6, nearly 25 miles per gallon is quite honestly, absolutely amazing. So well done Kia there. And so before we do any kind of accelerations though, did want to also mention the drive modes on the Telluride. By the way, that button is located directly behind the shifter there, but that is going to include comfort, eco, sport, and smart. So that is essentially going to adjust things like the shift points, throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. Smart is going to kind of adjust itself based on your driving style, things like that. But I prefer sport. I have a feeling I always do at least. So let's go ahead and do that. And it did immediately downshift for me. So it is going to hold the RPMs at a much higher level, giving you more power on demand. Steering feel is noticeably heavier as well. So a nice heavy weight to the sport driving mode as opposed to that comfort driving mode I previously had it in there. So a little bit of something for everybody, I guess, but I do like the weightier steering wheel of the sport. That's just me in particular, if you didn't put it in comfort mode. But anyways, now I think you guys know what we have to do next. Let's get set up for this here and let's do a quick little acceleration in our new 2020 Kia Telluride. And here we go. <laughs> yeah. Nearly 300 horsepower. Certainly not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway. This thing is a beast. Yeah, that acceleration was nice actually. Three row SUV again, 300 horsepower. Perfect acceleration in this thing, especially in sport driving mode. But so anyways, to go along with that, as always, braking is equally important. And so you will find four wheel disc brakes, of course, with the Kia Telluride. Up front, you're gonna have 13.4 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12 inch solid rear discs. And as far as the braking feel goes, I've had absolutely no issues in my week with the Telluride. So it definitely brings this one to a nice stop. Touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get independent and fierce and strut front suspension with coil springs and a stabilizer bar. In the back, an independent multi-link 
rear suspension with the stabilizer bar. As far as the ride quality goes, it's been absolutely amazing. And I guess I've been comparing it personally to my own 2017 three row Hyundai Santa Fe. Definitely has been soaking up PA's road imperfections a little bit better than that one, I will say that. So ride quality has been absolutely great. Certainly don't see any issues with going on long road trips in the Telluride either, as far as ride quality goes. So you're good there. Again, with the steering feel, it's been excellent. You do have the ability to adjust what kind of a steering feel you want. So if you want that heavier weighted steering wheel, go with the Sport, otherwise go with the Comfort. When it comes to cabin noise, it's been super quiet. Definitely quieter than a lot of the other SUVs I drive. And that's due in part, partly because there is an acoustic front windshield that comes standard for all trim levels. And also acoustic front window glass if you were to go with the EX and SX trim level. So I guess with the SX that we have today is even more sound deadening so really not a whole lot of road or wind noise coming into the cabin so that's definitely a plus as well touching on visibility I can see perfectly fine out the back it is a little boxier shape to the Telluride so for that reason you really shouldn't have any issues with visibility head-up display is actually gonna be optional on the SX trim level that we have today we do have that option and that is actually part of a prestige package that has two thousand dollars in case you were interested there but cool thing about that head-up display is you can actually adjust the color of it so I have it on neon green, but you do have the ability to make it orange or white as well. So with that head-up display, you can, of course, see the speed that you're currently going as well as the speed limit of any given road. So I definitely found that quite nice. Rain-sensing windshield wipers are also optional on the SX. Again, we have that option. So I actually experienced them this morning as well. So they automatically came on when it detects some water on the windshield. So one less thing you have to worry about when you're actually driving so you can focus better on enjoying the drive in this Telluride ride so that is a plus and since I mentioned that prestige package I did want to mention in addition to the head-up display that is also going to give you a 110 volt power inverter heated and ventilated second row seats Napa leather seating all the way around any premium headliner that premium headliner is pretty darn cool I gotta say it is one of the softest headliners I've ever experienced. And I guess it's kind of like suede, but it's not. It's just super, super soft. Has a very high-end feel to it. I know you guys can't feel it through this video right now, but it's a pretty nice headliner. Any new little segment I wanted to add since I had the Telluride for a week, as far as night visibility goes, the headlights on this thing are absolutely bright as stink. And not to mention, the Telluride looks freaking cool at night too. I actually got to park it here at night to show you guys. Those orange LED lights look absolutely amazing on the Telluride at night. In addition to the LED taillights, they look good too. But I just love the orange LED daytime running lights because they stand out. There's nothing else like that on the road. It's instantly identifiable that that is a Telluride just based off of that orange lighting. And by the way, the orange lighting is specific to the SX trim level. All other trims are gonna give you the standard uh, bluish white LED lighting, I guess you could say. And I'll get more into the lighting in a little bit, but LED lighting at night, just driving down the road, I could see perfectly fine. Certainly lit up the road quite well. High beams, of course, did just the same. So absolutely no issues with driving the Telluride at night, but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the exterior where I will mention more on that lighting of this new 2020 Kia Telluride. All right, you guys, here it is as the ice begins to melt off the Telluride this cold, cold fall morning. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and start up front because that front grille is actually going to differ slightly amongst the trim levels, of course. For instance, if you were to go with the LX trim level, you will find a gray front grille. However, all other trim levels will give you this particular dark metallic front grille that you are currently looking at. Definitely a very nice look to it. And of course, with that tiger nose design that Kia is known for, so definitely looks good up there. Do wanna also mention, if you guys can see this, there is a front skid plate that will standard on all trim levels as well. We'll get a silver finish with the LX and all other trim levels will give it a premium silver finish. So wanted to mention that as well. As far as those front bumper air ducts go, they actually do serve a purpose. They direct air around that front wheel and tire combination there, but they will actually come with a satin chrome finish for the S, EX, and SX trim levels. And that is what you're looking at right now. However, if you were to go with the LX, you will find a body colored finish on that front air duct at least. And now taking a look at the headlights, I left it on these LED daytime running lights that we have here on the SX because 
All trim levels but the SX will actually give you the standard LED daytime running lights that will come in that LED color. However, you will get orange LEDs if you were to go with the SX. I think that is one of the coolest things ever. It's different, it looks amazing, and it definitely grabs your attention if you're coming in the opposite direction of this thing. But anyways, as far as the real headlights go, projector beam headlights will come standard for all trim levels but the SX. And they will come, of course, with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they're gonna turn on automatically for you. Also, LED daytime running lights, as I was mentioning. LED headlights, however, will be found on the SX trim level that we have today. Therefore, that is what you're currently looking at. And again, orange LED daytime running lights will come standard with that and LED fog lights. And actually, the SX trim level is the only trim that will get those LED fog lights, just in case you wanted them. But so then one more thing I wanted to mention up front since we're up here, as far as the ground clearance goes, if you are on a back road, perhaps if you take a lot of back roads or you have a gravel driveway or something like that, eight inches of ground clearance will come with the Telluride. For comparison's sake, Honda Pilot gives you 8.4 inches. Hyundai Palisade gives you 7.9 inches. So kind of in the middle of the pack, really not too much of a difference between all three of those, but eight inches of ground clearance in case you were curious. And of course, I can't forget to mention the Telluride lettering spelled out horizontally on the hood, in the front of the hood there. And by the way, in case anybody was curious what Telluride actually is, Kia named this particular SUV after a town nestled in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. Got a bunch of ski resorts up there, very well-known ski resorts. But anyways, making our way to the side on this one, low profile roof rails will be found on the S trim level and up you will find a silver finish to them if you went with the S or EX trim levels and a satin chrome finish if you were to go with the SX trim level. However, rear privacy glass will come standard on all trim levels, chrome window surrounds on the LX and EX trim levels, satin chrome window surrounds on the S and SX trim levels. But now let's go ahead and take a look at our ice side mirrors here. Body colored heated side mirrors with LED integrated turn signals will come standard on all trim levels there. It will be power folding for the EX and SX trim levels, which means when you hit the lock and unlock button, they will of course fold in and out depending on if you know the car is locked or unlocked. And they will also have that reverse tilt down feature with the SX trim level. So when you do put it in reverse, they're gonna tilt down so you can better see what is directly beside you. So you don't go running over any bicycles or scooters or anything like that, of course. Then I'm gonna also mention zooming out a little bit, a chrome lower door molding will come with the LX and EX trim levels and a satin chrome door molding will come with the S and SX trim levels and I've noticed that is kind of a theme with the Telluride depending upon the trim level you will either get a chrome finish or a satin chrome finish and that actually includes the door handles as well but so now let's go ahead and take a look at the wheel setup 18 inch alloy wheels will come with the LX and EX trim levels 20 inch alloy wheels with the S and SX trim levels and of course the design will vary amongst the trim levels for instance for the S trim level you're going to find a machined silver finish to that 20 inch wheel design whereas with the SX trim level you're going to find that multi-spoke black finish that you were currently looking at right now but so now making our way to the back shark fin antenna up top of course rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper all of that comes standard for all trim levels of course telluride lettering spelled out horizontally once again and taking a look at those tail lights there will be led tail lights if you go with the ex or the sx trim levels that is how you're going to get the led tail lights at least and once again a nice satin chrome finish to the back part of that rear bumper and just to the side there you will find a single exhaust outlet but it will be hidden actually for the lx trim level however for all other trim levels you will find a single exhaust outlet with dual chrome exhaust tips so I think you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So since we are now round back, as far as opening that rear lift gate, there's actually a few different ways. One way, of course, is to simply press the button on the side of the key fob there. That is probably the simplest way, the way I would do it. There's also a button found just by the driver's left knee when they're in the driving position. That is yet another way you can do it. And it is actually a hands-free power lift gate for the EX and SX trim level. So 
three different ways you can open up that rear tailgate. And also, do want to mention you can actually set the speed to normal or fast as far as how quickly that rear tailgate will open. And Kia actually claims it is the fastest opening rear tailgate of any other manufacturer, any other vehicle out there right now, which is actually pretty convenient. I like that it's a little quicker than some of the other SUVs out there. So that's pretty cool. Also, yet another fun fact about that lift gate. So much going on back here. You can adjust the power lift gate height adjustment. And quite honestly, that's pretty standard. That's pretty normal. But usually there's preset height adjustments. There's either super tall or there's kind of like a middle height adjustment. However, Kia takes it one step further, giving you the ability to customize that height adjustment. So because everybody has different situations, everybody has different size garage doors. So it is important that when you open up that rear tailgate, it doesn't hit anything. And with the Telluride, you can fix that. For instance, if you wanted to set it to any particular height, all you need to do is pull down that rear tailgate and then hold the power tailgate button for about three seconds to set that height. The system's actually gonna beep twice to let you know that it is set. So therefore then you are good to park this in your garage if your garage door is a little lower or whatever the case. And that is pretty darn cool that Kia did that with the Telluride, but Nonetheless, once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at an even 21 cubic feet behind that third row. If that was not enough space, of course, they do fold down. And I do like the method that Kia chose to fold down those rear seats. It's super simple. All you need to do is pull on that lever and they simply just fold down. As opposed to like luxury SUVs where you press a button and you wait about 20 seconds for them to fold down. I do like this way. It's pretty darn quick. But once folded down behind that second row, cubic feetness comes in at 46 even. So good bit of space there as well and there's actually buttons that fold down the last row very quickly which bumps that total cubic feet number up to an even 87 cubic feet with all rows folded so now for comparison's sake because i'm sure if you're watching this video you may be shopping other three row suvs the hyundai palisade comes in at 86.4 honda pilot comes in at 83.9 Ford Explorer comes in at 87.8. So Kia Telluride takes all of them, but the Explorer and the Explorer has a little bit of cubic feet more, but not really all that much. So honestly, they're all pretty even there, but nonetheless, in that cargo area, I did want to mention there is some in-floor storage and quite a bit of it actually as well. I was actually quite surprised. You could fit a good bit of stuff back there. And I use that personally in my own SUV. There's always a need for in-floor storage, trust me. Grocery hooks you can also find in that cargo area. And there is a 12 power outlet back there as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the rear legroom third row legroom comes in at 31.4 inches and to my surprise I was actually able to fit back there without my knees touching that next row seating. I gotta be honest, that doesn't happen too often. 31.4 inches doesn't sound like a whole lot of space and quite honestly it isn't but I was still able to fit back there. It kind of surprised me. And, and to be honest, I can actually see myself going on a longer trip in that third row if I had to. Although, of course, the second row is better. But by the way, when it comes to the seating configurations for the Telluride, it is, of course, available as a seven passenger or an eight passenger vehicle. The eight passenger seating is going to come with the LX and EX. Seven passenger seating is going to come with the S and the SX trim levels. And so, therefore, the center row is going to be captain's chairs if you were to go with the S or the S. X trim levels. And of course, all three rows are going to be comfortable. There is rear ventilation located on the roof of the Telluride, so therefore everyone's good there. Third row cup holders, I found there's two on one side, three on the other side. And here's the kicker, this almost never happens. USB charging ports, there's actually one on each side for the third row passengers. A lot of times we'll find them in the second row, but almost never in the third row. So again, well done Kia for that. And by the way, to go about accessing that third row, you can do so by simply pressing one button. Those second row seats are automatically gonna slide forward for you. So very easy to get into the third row without me running or bumping into anything. And of course, with the captain's chairs, you can also just you know slide up the middle there, but two ways to get into that third row, I suppose. And actually to get back there, I did want to mention there are seatbelt coat hangers, so to speak. So you don't go tripping over those if you were to go into that third row. So I did utilize that as well. So many well thought out practical ideas in the Telluride, I swear. And to get, of course, back out of that third row, again, there's actually a button on the top of those second row seats. So again, all you need to do is press one button and it slides back forward and it's super easy to get out. So that was pretty nice. But let's get out of the third row and make our way to the 
second row here. As far as second row rear legroom goes, 42.4 inches, which quite honestly is a ton. Certainly not going to have any issues fitting into the second row. Again, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Did want to mention those second row seats are reclining second row seats as well. So even more comfort if you didn't have any third row passengers, that is. So that's pretty nice. If you were to go with the eight passenger setup, you're actually going to have a rear center armrest with cup holders for that middle section. But of course, since we have the captain's chairs, you're not going to have that because, you know, it's just the pass through area in the middle there. And so in the second row, perhaps the most practical, well thought out idea Kia had here was the positioning of the USB port. So, so a lot of times they're found on the bottom there where you could find the 12 volt power outlet, in this case, 150 volt power outlet as well. But a lot of times, if you guys have used that, you find when you get into that second row, a lot of times it'll get stepped on or kicked. And when you do that, they automatically pull out and then sometimes it breaks your cable. There's all kinds of different issues that arises with that kind of a setup. So Kia thought maybe we could put the USB cables on the back side of the front seats. Therefore, they're gonna be out of people's way when they get in. And they actually did one better. They actually put a little coat hanger once again, where you can loop the cable in there and then a place to actually store your cell phone as part of the seat back map pocket. So really everything is very well thought out there to be quite honest. So in getting in that second row, there's no possible way I'm going to be able to kick that USB cable or anything like that because it is completely out of the way. Well done Kia there. And I did want to also mention for the second row passengers for the EX and SX trim levels, you will actually get rear window sunshades back there as well. And this is definitely a plus, especially if you have a newborn or small child. Keeps the sun out of their eyes. You can get the ones at Walmart or something like that, but it definitely doesn't do anywhere near as good of a job as the sunshades that typically come from a manufacturer of any vehicle, really. So definitely enjoyed having them back there. And a couple of extra things I wanted to mention. The ambient lighting that I am about to mention in a second here does extend into that second row. And by the way, that's for the SX trim level only. But in addition to that, there is a prestige package that will add heated and ventilated second row seats as well, if you wanted them. And then make your way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats for the LX trim level. You will get a 10-way power adjustable driver seat with two-way power lumbar if you were to go with the S trim level and up. Leather seating is gonna be added to the EX and SX trim levels. And there's actually a premium Napa leather available for the SX trim level. Again, a package option there. Heated front seats will come standard for the S trim level and up, and you will get ventilated front seats for the EX and SX trim levels. And one of the cool things I like about those heated and ventilated front seats is the location of the buttons for them. The Telluride has done so many things differently and uniquely. I love it. And so the buttons for those are kind of elevated on their own platform by themselves, kind of located just by the driver's right knee and just by the passenger's left knee so kind of a different placement for them so I thought that was pretty darn cool but anyways overall having to tell you ride for a week I've certainly had no issues with seat comfort can certainly see myself going on long road trips at Ocean City Maryland or something like that in the Telluride. So very nice when it comes to seat comfort and it gets better with the steering wheel. Get ready, you guys. Tilt telescoping steering wheel, leather wrapped for all trim levels. And there will be an optional heated steering wheel for the EX and SX trim levels. We do have that optional heated steering wheel. And that's why I said it gets better because it's 27 degrees out this morning. It's quite cold and that optional heated steering wheel is definitely where it's at this morning at least. But so anyways, now let's get to the startup real quick. Let me show you guys the key here you do of your Kia logo on the one side, absolutely nothing on the other side. So you may be asking where are the buttons? They are all located on the side of the key fob. And so you have the lock button located at the very top where you kind of just simply press your thumb on it. It's a pretty cool setup here. Unlock and of course that button to pop the rear hatch, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So therefore I'm just simply gonna leave the key in my pocket, press the little button on the driver's side door there, put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located just by the driver's right knee there. And so when started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a fairly large digital display front and center there. To control what is on that digital display, simply use the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel. But there's actually a good bit of stuff you could scroll through there, including a digital speedometer if you wanted it. Of course, what driving mode you were in. It's also gonna give you a compass, all kinds of safety features, including your attention level, as well as a tire pressure monitoring 
lighting system. And you can of course adjust settings for the interior lighting, head up display colors, bunch of different other stuff. So that's pretty cool as well. And now make your way to overall interior quality, which very well may be the very best part of the Telluride. Power sunroof is gonna come with the S and EX trim levels. However, you will get a dual panel sunroof. That of course is what you're looking at right now that is gonna be specific to the SX trim level that we have here today. Also wireless phone charger located just in front of the shifter that is gonna come with the EX and SX trim levels. SX is also gonna give you home light controls for up to three different garage doors located just underneath the rear view mirror there. Dual zone climate control for the EX and SX, wood grain interior accents, same trim levels, and they're gonna be located just below the infotainment display, above the passenger side glove box, and continuing on to the doors and the back doors as well. So I love the wood green accents in this thing. Overhead sunglass holder is gonna come standard for every single trim level. And of course, with the SX trim level only, you will also get stainless steel door sills and pedals. Nice little accent there as well. LED map and room lights for the S trim level and up. This is one of the coolest things. I didn't realize how much I would like this because usually you just have those regular halogen bulbs, but the LEDs at night on the inside actually look very high end and very nice. So I did appreciate that. And quite honestly, sitting inside the Telluride, you could swear you were sitting inside the BMW or a Genesis or a very high end luxury vehicle to be quite honest especially with the wood grain interior accents and i can tell you guys having reviewed plenty of genesis cars already these buttons in between the volume and tune buttons are actually straight off of genesis the luxury division brand of hyundai and you guys know the relationship of course with hyundai and kia and genesis are all essentially the same company more or less just below that you have the dual zone climate control and just below that you have a 12 volt power outlet couple usb charging ports actually as well as that wireless phone charge Larger. Then you have a small little cubby area, a couple cup holders, electronic parking brake behind that. And if you open up the center armrest there, you do have a very deep storage area and a small little tray as well within that. But essentially what I am trying to say is absolutely amazing interior quality, especially for the price point of the Telluride. So well done Kia there. And once again, it gets even better, of course, with the tech display, eight inch color touchscreen display with the LX and S trim levels. However, if you bumped up to the EX or the SX trim levels, you will find this 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display that you are currently looking at right now. Either way, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay for every single trim level. Meaning if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Telluride. Therefore, you have free navigation up on that display screen through your smartphone, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs. There's a couple other compatible apps as well. You can actually check out your climate control settings for both the front and the rear climate control up there as well. Ambient lighting settings can be also accessed up there. And that was very fun to play around with. I'll show you guys some of the clips at night of me doing that. But really there's just a circular little display up on that tech display. You can adjust up to 64 different colors of that ambient lighting. That is absolutely amazing. I love that Kia did 64 different colors. There's some preset colors, but then of course you have the ability to customize it. And of course that ambient lighting again does go into the second row as well. So very nice with the ambient lighting there. A couple other things worth mentioning, there is something called quiet mode. And so quiet mode is kind of cool if you wanna to listen to the radio and you got some kids that are sleeping in the back on a long road trip. Quiet mode doesn't allow the volume to go above level seven. So it keeps it quiet in the front and completely blocks out the rear speakers, allowing the rear passengers to sleep, or the rear kids, I should say, to sleep. So that quiet mode feature is actually kind of cool. I've been in those kinds of situations where the kids are sleeping in the back seat and you wanna keep it kind of quiet in the front. So quiet mode's a good idea there. And there's also a mode called driver talk, which is kind of cool as well. It's kind of like one of those features where if you're trying to yell at the kids, this is a three row SUV. Sometimes the third row kids may not be able to hear you over the second row kids kind of thing. And you want to project your voice into that third row, perhaps. Driver talk is essentially like an intercom system that projects your voice into that third row so they can better hear you. And it also sounds really cool doing like a Darth Vader kind of voice or an info commercial for Sunday, 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 or something like that. It's a pretty cool little system there. Sunday, 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 get your telly right here, go pony Kia and Kia's LPA, where the deals are gold and the Kia's are gold as well.
But so in addition to that, there is a factory navigation system available. You can of course check out your radio settings up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems on the Telluride, six speakers will come with the LX, S, and EX trim levels. However, you will find a 10 speaker Harman Kardon sound system with the SX trim level that is actually gonna give you an external amp, a subwoofer, and 630 watts. And so therefore, I think you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> this bass is insane. Definitely a ton of clarity. The bass is ridiculous. Well done, Harman Kardon on the Telluride. That was freaking awesome. <laughs> but so the last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Telluride in reverse, every single trim level will give you a rear view camera. And in addition to that, the SX trim level is actually going to add a surround view monitor, giving you a couple different views actually as well, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention when it comes to safety is the Telluride is an IIHS top safety pick so that's an excellent start right there in addition to that front side side curtain airbags and a driver's knee airbag as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats also rear child door locks will come standard tire pressure monitoring system but in addition to that Telluride does very well with standard safety features and here's why also standard on every single trim level of the Telluride, it is going to include automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, forward collision warning, lane keep assist, lane following assist, lane departure warning, driver attention warning, which is actually displayed via a five bar system in that center digital gauge display there so you can know when you need to really step up your game. Probably when you get to around the two or one bar area, I thought that was kind of funny, but Rear occupant alert system, also standard rear park assist monitors, blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. That is something that usually can be found on higher trim levels or an optional feature on some of the other SUVs out there. For instance, the Honda Pilot doesn't have it on their base trim level, only on some of the upper trim levels, but the Telluride has it standard on every single trim level. So that is definitely nice as well. And in addition to that, that SX trim level is also going to add forward park assist monitors as well. And so as far as my overall opinion of the Telluride, ride and would I get one? Absolutely. Ride quality has been excellent, certainly better than my 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe I currently own. Standard safety features are absolutely amazing. Again, a lot of the safety features are optional on a lot of other manufacturers out there. Also, you have an above average predictive reliability score. I know it's a brand new vehicle, but they can do that based off of what is actually put in the vehicle. So that's kind of nice. More cargo space than most other SUVs. Interior and exterior styling are absolutely amazing, at least in my opinion. That's of course going to be subjective depending on who you ask but overall i think it definitely looks good and like i had previously mentioned it did just recently win that motor trend suv of the year award so it's got that going forward as well so overall i did want to say thank you kia for letting me have this vehicle for a week absolutely had a blast in it do appreciate you guys watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like feel free to pick up some merch just below the video there if you want to support the channel be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold